clear uh, gathering of invitation only uh, senior executives, NGOs, and governments to come and talk about uh, advancing uh, global prosperity through innovation. And our, uh, even our annual summit is in June. So, um, but the other thing that we really pride ourselves on doing is the capability development work we do through partnerships with technology companies. We worked 10 years with Microsoft, with Sony, with DuPont, Nissan, and other, and other companies to uh, systemically work with them to build marketing capabilities and innovation capabilities. And, uh, and that creates revenues that we are able to use for funding research, for funding uh, student internships. We're very proud to announce this year uh, an initiative where uh, six of our students will be going on fellowships to India to work with NGOs uh, on social, ent social entrepreneurship projects. Um, so this is a fellowship program. Uh, we also have uh, recently announced a faculty research program, which will offer under a couple thousand a year for faculty to do research in the area of technology and innovation. And one thing that uh, we decided this week to look at is uh, potentially funding a seed fund for incubating startups uh, at Kellogg. And my center has been, I'm challenging you guys, if you can figure out how the governance will work, we will put up uh, $250,000 a year for the next three years. Um, so that will create a corpus that will allow us to fund um, you know, about 20 to 30 startups. So there's a lot of energy, and uh, you can get out there. And what we're going to do is to bring in matching VC funds. Uh, and uh, so that we have an integrator at Kellogg, and now we have funding to support it. So, exciting stuff. Um, but what we do at the center is very similar to what the conference is about, and that is all about connect and collaborate. And I think that is one of the dominant themes of the past five to ten years. And it has the space to sort of pause for a minute and reflect on how our lives have changed just in the past decade. Uh, as I look back, even to, it is hard to realize that phenomena like Facebook and LinkedIn and, and YouTube and, and uh, Groupon and all of these things and, and the iPhone, these are all within the last five years. So I, I shudder to think, well, somebody just asked me, what will, what will the iPad look like in 10 years? And I said, well, you know, it'll disappear. It'll be on our body somewhere. We'll be wearing it, you know, walking around with it. Uh, so so there's, a, there's just a phenomenon. And, and I find that change is, is exponentiating. And change exponentiates because of what Isaac Newton said, that we, I see further because I stand on the shoulders of giants. So technologies that come today stand on the shoulders of technologies that have been built before. That's why it took Google 10 years, it took Facebook 5 years, it took Groupon 2 years. So you know we're seeing this phenomenal acceleration of value creation. So if you have the right idea at the right time, uh, you know, the sky is the limit. It is really interesting how I've been around a long time and I was advising startups in 1996, 1997, and many of the ideas that failed then are coming back now. I remember talking to a wireless data startup company called OmniSky, which actually went public, and uh, they are no different from what's going on in the App Store today, except there was no critical mass there. There wasn't the platform, there wasn't the, the infrastructure, there weren't that many devices, there wasn't the network that would handle the data. But now all the pieces are in place. So it's a fascinating time to be an entrepreneur because you don't need to do anything from an infrastructure standpoint. You go to Amazon, you rent your infrastructure, you know, you can basically set up a company in a day. And uh, you have critical mass of consumers, and you figure out a creative way to attract them and engage with them, you know, you can you can create value very, very quickly. It's an exciting time for entrepreneurs. It's also an exciting time for companies who are looking to connect with their customers. I've been doing a lot of work with brands. I was with McDonald's last week, really spending three days with them, uh, with their leadership team on trying to understand how they engage. It was called engaging in the digital world. They are really starting to understand how social media becomes core of our marketing and communication. This is not some, you're not like kids playing with pebbles on a beach anymore. Now, this is core. Social media is not an error term. Social media now is going to be the dominant way that you connect. And in fact, the funny thing now is that we used to build communities around our brands. We will now need to build our brands around our communities. This community has become core. Uh, engagement has become core. And, uh, but 
the, the, the challenge that I see though for firms is that they are internally set up as command and control organizations. And what they need to do externally is connect and collaborate. So there's a fundamental disconnect between how organizations are structured and how they need to connect. It's all very well to say we should crowdsource this and we should get customer input, but how do you hardwire that customer input into every department of your organization? You aren't set up that way. So there are some really interesting challenges that we, we face. But also sort of, you know, you can connect through innovation, but you can also connect to do innovation. And uh, this is something PNG figured out many years ago, what they call connect plus develop. I think now companies are realizing that customers have become an interesting source of innovation also, because there's a lot of creativity that's out there outside your company. This is something I've written about in a book called The Global Brain a couple of years ago, that there's a global brain you can tap into. And uh, this, this, these notions of open innovation, the network-centric innovation are also very, very central. And, uh, and I'm fascinated by the speakers who are here today because in a sense, they're all talking about connection. Right? Whether it's AOL or LinkedIn or you know, Dell talking about social media and so on, it's all about connecting. And it pays to reflect. You know, we think, there's a very interesting quote about this, that at, at times like these, it pays to remember that there have been other times like these. Right? So, but, so, so this, is, this is an echo of the past. If man is a social animal, and every killer app that the internet has produced is ultimately a social application. Starting with email, which only old people like us use now. My kids don't respond to any emails I send them. <laughs> they're on social networks or they're text messages. So we went from email, you know, we went to AOL with buddy list and instant messaging. Right? And then we started to create these social networks. And uh, even if you look at the companies like Match.com and so on, I mean, they're all about relationships. So ultimately, we are hungry for social connection. And we are also warriors. So now we can like, look into other people's lives uh, through social networks. Like, there's this you know, insatiable curiosity to figure out what's going on. That's why people follow so many celebrities on Twitter. <coughs> Why do I want to know what they had for coffee and breakfast in the morning? You know? But apparently, millions of people find interest in what Justin Bieber loved to. So, uh, but it's all this, this hunger for social connection and, and the networks and the infrastructure that is represented by some of the speakers in the, in the room really makes this all possible. So it's really a, it's, it's a fascinating time uh, for companies, for consumers, for brands, and for innovation because the network changes everything. And it's really about the network. Uh, and, and I'm glad that, that we've got a really distinguished set of speakers here. Uh, but I'm just going to end on a sort of slightly Luddite note. Uh, I think sometimes we go too far with all this hyper-connectivity and uh, networking and so on. So I actually signed on Facebook and I signed off because I realized I do not need any more friends. And, uh, <laughs> and when I signed up on Facebook, a whole bunch of people showed up out of the woodwork that I've not met my college you know, buddies who I've met for 25 years. I was like, wow, that's interesting. And then after three months of random conversations with, with these folks, I said, there's a reason I was not in touch with them. <laughs> I do not care. Uh, <laughs> So I signed up. So I think LinkedIn is a better place to be than Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> There's a purpose there. I mean, Facebook has, don't get me wrong, Facebook has a purpose, but its purpose has, got, has morphed over time. Uh, and uh, actually, there is such a thing now as too much connectivity because we need time to pause, we need time to reflect. We live in an interrupt driven society. How many times do you get interrupted through the day? With instant messages with text, with email, with voicemails, with, you know, when do you have time to think? So I think that all of us should take a week off and unplug from the grid and go somewhere where nobody can reach us. That's where actually my wife is, she's on a 10 day meditation retreat. I'm going there in August too, because I think mean, that's what we need to do sometimes, because there's too much noise in the system. But with that said, let's create some more noise. <laughs>